Today we will share important information about herpes simplex virus, signs and symptoms and how Dr. Christine Bueller discovered the way to eliminate herpes simplex virus in less than a month. We will share the details about Dr. Christine Bueller at the end of this video. Infection with herpes simplex virus, commonly known as herpes, can be due to either herpes simplex virus type 1, HSV1, or herpes simplex virus type 2, HSV2. HSV1 is mainly transmitted by oral-to-oral -oral contact to cause infection in or around the mouth, oral herpes. However, HSV1 can also be transmitted through oral genital contact to cause infection in or around the genital area, genital herpes. HSV2 is almost exclusively transmitted through genital-to-genital -genital contact during sex, causing infection in the genital or anal area, genital herpes. Both oral herpes infections and genital herpes infections are mostly asymptomatic or unrecognized but can cause symptoms of painful blisters or ulcers at the site of infection, ranging from mild to severe. Key facts The herpes simplex virus is categorized into two types, herpes simplex virus type 1, HSV1, and herpes simplex virus type 2, HSV2. HSV1 is mainly transmitted by oral-to-oral -oral contact to cause oral herpes, which can include symptoms known as cold sores, but can also cause genital herpes. HSV2 is a sexually transmitted infection that causes genital herpes. Both HSV1 and HSV2 infections are lifelong. An estimated 3.7 billion people under age 50, 67%, have HSV1 infection globally. An estimated 491 million people aged 15 to 49, 13%, worldwide have HSV2 infection. Most oral and genital herpes infections are asymptomatic. Symptoms of herpes include painful blisters or ulcers at the site of infection. Herpes infections are most contagious when symptoms are present but can still be transmitted to others in the absence of symptoms. Infection with HSV2 increases the risk of acquiring and transmitting HIV infection. Herpes simplex virus type 1, HSV1 HSV1 is a highly contagious infection, that is common and endemic throughout the world. Most HSV1 infections are acquired during childhood, and infection is lifelong. The vast majority of HSV1 infections are oral herpes, infections in or around the mouth, sometimes called oral labial, oral labial or oral facial herpes, but a proportion of HSV1 infections are genital herpes, infections in the genital or anal area. Signs and Symptoms Oral herpes infection is mostly asymptomatic, and most people with HSV1 infection are unaware they are infected. Symptoms of oral herpes include painful blisters or open sores called ulcers and or around the mouth. Sores on the lips are commonly referred to as cold sores. Infected persons will often experience a tingling, itching or burning sensation around their mouth, before the appearance of sores. After initial infection, the blisters or ulcers can periodically recur. The frequency of recurrences varies from person to person. Genital herpes caused by HSV1 can be asymptomatic or can have mild symptoms that go unrecognized. When symptoms do occur, genital herpes is characterized by one one or more genital or anal blisters or ulcers. After an initial genital herpes episode, which may can be severe, symptoms may recur. However, genital herpes caused by HSV1 typically does not recur frequently, unlike genital herpes caused by herpes simplex virus type 2. Transmission HSV1 is mainly transmitted by oral-to-oral -oral contact to cause oral herpes infection, via contact with the HSV1 virus in sores, saliva, and surfaces in or around the mouth. However, HSV1 can also be transmitted to the genital area through oral genital contact to cause genital herpes. HSV1 can be transmitted from oral or skin surfaces that appear normal and when there are no symptoms present. However, the greatest risk of transmission is when there are active sores. Individuals who already have HSV1 oral herpes infection are unlikely to be subsequently infected with HSV1 in the genital area. In rare circumstances, HSV1 infection can be transmitted from a mother with genital HSV1 infection to her infant during delivery to cause neonatal herpes. Herpes simplex virus type 2, HSV2 HSV2 infection is widespread throughout the world and is almost exclusively sexually transmitted, causing genital herpes. HSV2 is the main cause of genital herpes, which can also be caused by herpes simplex virus type 1, HSV1. Infection with HSV2 is lifelong and incurable. 
Signs and Symptoms Genital herpes infections often have no symptoms, or mild symptoms that go unrecognized. Most infected people are unaware that they have the infection. Typically, about 10 to 20 percent of people with HSV2 infection report a prior diagnosis of genital herpes. However, clinical studies following people closely for new infection demonstrate that up to a third of people with new infections may have symptoms. When symptoms do occur, genital herpes is characterized by one or more genital or anal blisters or open sores called ulcers. In addition to genital ulcers, symptoms of new genital herpes infections often include fever, body aches, and swollen lymph nodes. After an initial genital herpes infection with HSV2, recurrent symptoms are common but often less severe than the first outbreak. The frequency of outbreaks tends to decrease over time but can occur for many years. People infected with HSV second of may experience sensations of mild tingling or shooting pain in the legs, hips, and buttocks before the appearance of genital ulcers. Transmission HSV2 is mainly transmitted during sex, through contact with genital surfaces, skin, sores or fluids of someone infected with the virus. HSV2 can be transmitted from skin in the genital or anal area that looks normal and is often transmitted in the absence of symptoms. In rare circumstances, HSV2 infection can be transmitted from a mother to her infant during delivery to cause neonatal herpes. Amazing Top 10 Tips for Herpes Simplex Virus, Including Recommended Herpes Treatment for Herpes Virus HSV1 or 2, EBV and Genital Herpes. Number 1. Be aware that loose talk can damage relationships. HSV is commonly caught through oral sex and most people catch genital herpes from a partner who doesn't know they are infected. Three quarters of those who are HSV positive are unaware of their status, having only mild or non-existent symptoms. Asymptomatic carriers may experience their first symptoms years after initial infection so transmission between partners may occur at any time in established relationships. Suggesting that a third party may be involved is unhelpful and often untrue. But there will often be uncertainty as the partner is unlikely to be diagnosed unless clear symptoms are present. Number 2. Herpes is a condition that has been subjected to unnecessary hype and is now highly stigmatized. Many patients aren't unduly affected by physical symptoms but are psychologically devastated when diagnosed. Referring to the condition as cold sores on the genitals and explaining the parallel with chickenpox or herpes varicella allows the patient to put the condition in context and helps to contain stigma. Number 3. Be alert to the possibility of non-genital symptoms. Facial recurrences may occasionally affect the eye or the brain. Genital reactivation from the sacral ganglion may cause symptoms in the anogenital region and even down the back of the leg, sometimes accompanied by sciatica or other types of neuralgia such as burning skin, itching, aching or jabbing sensations. Number 4. Herpes simplex types 1 and 2 are clinically indistinguishable. Patients will present reporting malaise, followed by localized pain or itching. Signs include small vesicles or fissuring. Look under the foreskin or in the folds of the labia as lesions may be small and easily missed. Swabs are best taken from the base of a freshly pierced blister and PCR-based methods are preferable to viral culture. Typing should be done as a type 1 result may be reassuring to the patient since the majority of future contacts will already carry type 1 antibodies. Dysuria may cause women to attribute primary symptoms to cystitis, but cystitis is characterized by frequent urination, whereas genital herpes affects the urethra and stifles the desire to urinate. In rare cases, catheterization may be required. In patients with recurrences that do not respond to antivirals, consider an additional or differential diagnosis. These include Bechet syndrome, eczema, pemphigus vulgaris and lichen sclerosis. Number 5. If the infection is severe enough to treat, prescribe a 5-day course of acyclovir even if diagnosis is still uncertain. It's a cheap, safe treatment and will have helped the patient if HSV is confirmed. Lidocaine 5% ointment can ease discomfort and may speed healing. There is no place for topical acyclovir in primary infection. Number 6. Look out for neuralgia in the affected dermatomy. This can be treated with analgesics or systemic acyclovir. Number 7. Refer patient to clinic immediately if symptoms are not clear. When diagnosis is obvious, suggest patient visits a clinic for a full screening in a few weeks, when symptoms of herpes simplex have resolved. Number 8. Reassure patients the condition may be painful and is stigmatized but is seldom medically serious. 
Most patients do not suffer frequent recurrences but these are more likely with HSV2. Sections are no longer routine when the patient has a recurrence at term and the risks of vaginal delivery for the fetus are small and must be set against risks to the mother of the operation. Advice on pregnancy, transmission, relationships and stigma is available from the Herpes Viruses Association website and helpline. HV a patient cards to hand out are available free on request. Number 9. Offer prophylactic acyclovir to patients who are having frequent recurrences for more than 6 a year or if symptoms are perceived to be a problem by the patient. Number 10. Offer type-specific antibody test to partner if required. The results could reduce stress and recurrences if both partners are found to have the same type. These are the top 10 tips from Dr. Phil Hammond. He is a GP in Bristol and patron of the Herpes Viruses Association. Credit to www.pulsetoday.co.uk The last part is about treatment. Antivirals, such as acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir are the most effective medications available for people infected with HSV. If you want to learn more about how Dr. Christine Bueller discovered the way to eliminate herpes simplex virus in less than a month, you can watch her video. The link to her video at this video's description below. Thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel so we can keep sharing the valuable information with you. See you again in our next video.